Welcome to Speaking of Love, the podcast with your host, LaToya. This podcast was created as a platform for spreading love. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Speaking of Love. My name is LaToya and I am the host of this podcast. I am coming to you live today. I have a different agenda. Today's podcast will be a little bit different from the way I usually conduct my podcast. I don't have a guest today, but I have a very important message that I would like to deliver today regarding suicide awareness. I would like to give you all just a little brief history about my podcast. My podcast was created in honor of my father, Herman McAlpin Jr. My dad committed suicide on March 2nd of 2020. And since his passing, I have dedicated my life to helping others who are struggling with mental health challenges. And today I wanna talk to you about suicide awareness and suicide prevention. So I have a PowerPoint presentation that I am going to present today. So I am going to uh, share my screen just a moment to get this prepared. Uh, One moment. Okay, so let me go into this. Just a moment. Okay. Okay, just a moment. I am getting it together, guys, getting it together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. My entire screen. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right. I think we are ready. Okay, so today I have a suicide awareness presentation that I would like to present to you. Okay, so today I have a suicide awareness presentation that I would like to present to you. Okay, so sorry about that. I have a I have a suicide awareness presentation that I would like to present to you. Um, this podcast here was created in honor of my father. This picture here is of my father, Herman McAlpin Jr. And unfortunately, my dad is no longer with us. So today I am going to talk to you all about suicide awareness. I would like to, first of all, let you all know that suicide is something that we can all participate in. You don't have to be a trained professional. You don't have to be uh, a doctor. You can be any person, a human being can help someone who may be struggling with suicide. So what we can do is talk about the effects of suicide. Did you know that every two hours and 11 minutes, a person under the age of 25 dies by suicide? And for every suicide completion, there are between 50 and 200 attempts. These are the risk factors for suicide, depression, low self-esteem, mental illness, substance abuse, eating disorders, a family history of suicide, self-mutilation, prior suicide attempt, situational crisis, athletes may be at increased risk due to injuries, intense pressure, success and failure mindsets. These are some of the risk factors for suicide. What are you looking for? If a person is contemplating suicide, nine times out of 10, this individual is going to talk about suicide more frequently than any other person. They may withdraw from their friends, family, teammates. They also will make statements about feeling hopeless, helpless, and maybe even worthless. Have you noticed dramatic mood changes in the people that you're around? That could be another sign of a risk factor for suicide. 
preoccupation with death, someone who has become fixated on how people die, what happens after death, where do we go from here? Those are all risk factors and what to look for for suicide. How about a person who is purpose, has no purpose in life or they have no sense or reason of living? If they've lost an interest in the things that they used to care about, I know like for myself, I'm an artist. People who often contemplate suicide sometimes may lose interest in being what they used to be, whether it's art, whether it's sports. When they lose a common interest, that could be a sign of suicide. Giving away value possessions. If you have someone in your life who's starting to give away things that mean a lot to them, watch out for that. They're giving away their most prized possessions, jewelry, memorabilia, things that meant a lot to them at one point. If they start to give those things away for no apparent reason, that could be a sign that they're contemplating suicide. Also, unexplained anger, aggression, and an ir ir irritability. Also, a loss of an important relationship. People break up. They have marriages that end. Someone can lose a parent. Someone passes away and dies, an animal, a pet. All of these are factors to look for for someone who may be contemplating suicide. So you might be wondering, how do you help someone? How do you start? Where do you begin? When you become concerned about someone's well-being, you may ask the following questions. Ask the person. If you feel that they're doing something that's not usual or not normal, just ask them, do you feel your mood has changed lately? Have you been sad in the last week or two? These are all questions that you can ask someone that may be contemplating suicide. Have you felt an increase in stress lately? Have you had an event that has happened in your life recently that's been stressful to you? Have you had thoughts of hurting yourself? Have you felt so bad that you have had thoughts of dying or thoughts of suicide? Just sit down and talk to that person. Be honest with them. How can you help? Okay, like I said earlier, you don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be a trained professional to help someone who may be contemplating suicide. We can all help someone. So if you are concerned that someone is at risk of harming themselves or harming others, here are some things that you can do. Ask them to talk with someone who can help them. It can be a professional. It could be a friend, a neighbor, a relative, someone else who can help them see things from a different perspective. Or you can set up a meeting or a phone call with a mental health professional to assess them safely. Always stay with the person. Stay with them until they are in a safe environment and they have had contact with a mental health professional. Don't leave them alone. That's the number one factor. If someone is in the mood and they're contemplating suicide, stay by their side, have someone stay with them, but by all means, do not leave them alone. And make sure you follow up with an appointment with a mental health counselor. Make sure that follow-up appointment has been made. A lot of times people have bouts of depression, bouts of suicide, and what happens is they go and they get help and then they feel like they're okay. But what you need to know is that the help should be ongoing. Mental health crisis, people who are struggling with things, they need to see someone on a repeated pattern. You don't just treat it one time and then walk away and think that you're okay. It's something that you have to continue to look into. Now, what are some of the myths about suicide? Here are a few myths things that are not true about suicide. Asking someone about suicide will increase their risk of suicide. Okay, that's not true. If you ask someone about suicide, it's not gonna increase their risk of suicide. It's gonna show them that you care. It has been shown that asking someone about suicide actually lowers their anxiety and it opens up communication and it lowers the risk. So talking to someone and asking them about it, if you feel that someone may be contemplating suicide, it's okay to ask them about that. Don't be afraid to ask because keeping silent would not be to their benefit. Now, here's another myth. Only experts can stop a suicide. That's totally untrue. A co any common person can help someone stop a suicide. It could be a friend, a neighbor, a relative, someone close to you, someone who's not close to you. It could be a total stranger. 
someone can help you stop a suicide, but you don't have to be a trained, certified, professional expert to stop someone who's in need. Now, here's another myth. Suicidal people don't talk about it. Did you know that most people who are contemplating suicide have given some sort of clue or they have communicated their intent prior to their attempt? I know for my dad, my dad was a, he was a big time comedian. He was such a funny guy. And I realize now that he's gone that he used humor as a way to mask a lot of his pain. So my dad would make jokes like he would say, oh, I had a stressful day today. Can somebody show me where the ambassador bridge is? And I would say, well, why do you want to know where the bridge is? And he would say, oh, you know, so I can jump off the bridge. So when people make jokes about killing themselves and suicide, pay, pay very close attention to that because it could be them reaching out for help. Here are a few more myths about suicide. Those who talk about suicide don't do it. Okay, this is a myth because those who talk about it may try it and they may even complete a self-destructive act. So just because people talk about suicide, it doesn't mean that they're never gonna do it. Most people who have committed suicide have talked about it out loud at some point in their lives. Once a person decides to attempt suicide, no one can change their mind. Okay, that's another myth. People's minds can change all the time. Suicide is a preventable form of death and almost any positive action can save a person's life. So just because a person feels suicidal and they're at the breaking point, it doesn't mean that they have to stay in that mind space and only a person like you or I can help them. Now here's another myth. This says that no one can stop suicide. That's another myth because if people in crisis get the help that they need, they are far less likely to attempt suicide. So when it comes to suicide, the best thing that we can do is be of aid to the person who's in crisis. We can't turn our backs on them. We have to help them because we are the ones that can turn the situation around for the good. I have a few available resources here for anyone who may be contemplating suicide, anyone who may know someone who's contemplating suicide. I have some valuable resources here. 1-800-273-TALK is the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. 1-800-273-TALK. You can call that number. You can talk with a trained professional. They will help you. They are here for you. And just to let you know, there, there are local mental health centers. You can look on Google in your local area. Enter your zip code. Enter your zip code in your Google search, and you can get the help you need that way. And this is the end of my presentation here. I'm going to go back to my other screen and talk to you all face to face. So thank you all for listening this week. I know my podcast was a little different, but I did want to touch on um, suicide awareness and prevention just a little bit today. I belong to a suicide awareness and prevention group. And just this past week, we have had at least 20 new people join the group because suicide is on the rise. So many people are losing their lives. So many people are no longer in a space where they want to be alive anymore. And that's heartbreaking. And I want you all to know that suicide only hurts the people that love you, the people that you leave behind. So your absence is not really solving a problem. It's creating a bigger one. So if you feel that you don't want to be on this earth anymore, talk to someone because you matter you are loved and just know that what you are facing today won't be this way forever. Tomorrow is a new day. And when I say tomorrow is a new day, I don't literally mean today is Saturday and Sunday is gonna be better. Tomorrow, the near future is going to be better. Nothing lasts forever. Everything in life is impermanent and you won't face this crisis forever. So please continue to love each other, continue to love yourselves, reach out for help, talk to someone. The world needs you. You are important. You matter. 
And if you need someone to chat with, I'm always available. I'm here. You can reach me directly through a private message on Facebook, and I'm here to talk to you. I was on the phone the other night, and I talked with a young lady who wasn't feeling her best, and we were able to definitely turn her situation around for the better. And actually, she called me this morning, and she's feeling a lot better. So I love you all. Thank you all for listening. And I will be back here next Saturday. I have a phenomenal young lady coming on and she's going to talk to us about autism awareness and she's going to bring love into our world here on Speaking of Love, the podcast. And I hope to see you all next Saturday at 12 o'clock noon. Have a great day.